Hi, this is Kathy Quinn with Floriani. Floriani is a division of RK Distributing, and I want to welcome you to this week's project of the week. Well, I was recently at a hands on, and we were doing a hands on quilting event, and a couple of ladies showed me their quilt labels that they had created out of the total quilter. So I thought I that was a real good idea, and I thought I would just bring up some ideas and some instructions in case you want to make a label for one of your beautiful appli quilts, your applique quilts, your faux piecing quilts, because of course we have so many options in my total quilter. So the first thing you do is right up here we have a border icon. Now none of us probably are going to border blocks. Occasionally it's really cool if you're going to put a design in the middle of them or something like that, but generally speaking we don't put borders within quilt blocks. Now, embroiderers do a lot more than just the regular quilter public, but all quilters make labels. So I'm going to come up and I'm going to left mouse click on the border icon. Now you'll notice here that we've got all kinds of different shapes and embellishments. Now I did see, I'll have to mention this, I saw a woman showed me her daughter's bridal napkins that she had made for her wedding and they were just gorgeous and she took a simple design such as this and did a beautiful monogram above it and the monogram was a couple of inches tall it was beautiful looked very nice and then she made a real cute uh, ring holder for it that was just beautiful a napkin ring holder but we're going to focus on quilt labels so let's come in here and let's look around and notice we've got all kinds of fun shapes borders and let's just look through and what I like about this is there are real options well here's a cute one I hadn't even noticed this one let's bring this in and let's say we're doing a cute little quilt label for maybe oh let's say a baby quilt so we're made a little baby quilt we want to put a label on it we might want to put the child's name birth weight love grandma but let's come in and look now I have text here now in here I'm gonna drop down and I'm going to select my text. Now I have circular text, which I might could use in this one, but I'm going to go for straight text right now. I've Now that I've left mouse clicked on it, I'm going to left mouse click on screen. And now what that does is it brings up all the available alphabets that are available in my total quilter. Now we realize in total control, we have lots and lots of alphabets but we've given you some real great alphabets and some of the more popular alphabets are in here so let's go through and look at this a little bit and let's um oh there's so many cute one ever after is cute Loxley's cute there's a lot of them let's see here let's see what we want to do because we want to get quite a bit of text in there and of course we've given you some small script which is really nice looking at doing this sort of thing I really like ever after and fables those are two of my favorites but they're gonna be a little bulky for this so let's just keep kinda of looking through let's see let's go with Oh, I'm going to go ahead and go with Centro. I would go with a child's play, except for this is a little bit more elegant um, border I have picked. So let's go ahead and go with, I think we're going to go with Centro. Now that I've got it up, I'm going to type in, uh, let's just say, um, this is to a new grandchild. Let's say it's to Jocelyn. So I'm going to put Jocelyn and let's just say I put her birth date and I might do it in numbers. I might do it with December. Um, let's see, let's do, and we'll do 17. Of course she hasn't been born yet if I do that, so we'll do uh, 6. Alrighty, so now I might put love always
Grandma Kathy. So that's what my grandkids call me. Now I'm going to align center, so we're okay on that. So let's apply. Now there that is. That's awfully large. Now this is width of 8 inches. Well, that's going to be a little big. But let's come in here and let's fit this to screen. Because, of course, I can make my border as big as I need it to be, my, my label border. So let's come in here, though, and let's say... I don't want the letters that tall, that's for sure. I'm going to do it, I'm going to go with half inch. So in here, I'm going to put half inch in the height. And notice, um, as I've hovered over this, it shows me all the characters I have available in this alphabet. So if I had picked something that wasn't here, I would know right off, such as a forward slash. If I put a forward slash in between the date, then I wouldn't have had that character available. So it's always nice to double check that you haven't used anything you don't have. Now it's also giving me the information that it shouldn't be less than nine millimeters tall, but not more than 30 millimeters. So we're in good shape here. Now notice it says millimeters. It also tells me in inches. If you'll notice there's millimeters first and inches second. So I'm going to apply that, so we have it at half an inch. Now I notice here that my J hangs down a little bit, and it runs into my, if I pick this, notice my J and my 6 are touching. That is not attractive. We don't want those to overrun each other, so I'm going to reselect my text. And notice I've got line spacing. What it's talking about is the distance between the first and second and third and fourth line of text. So I'm going to up this to about a 40% and let's apply. This is kind of like trial and error. You're not going to have an exact amount because every alphabet that percentage is different because of the difference in where their letters hang and everything. So you notice though I have cleared my six and that's what's important. Now this is only six inches wide now. Well that's not too unrealistic for a label on the back of your quilt. So now that I've got that, I am going to come in here, get my select icon on the upper left hand side, and I'm going to grab my little outline here, my border design, and I'm going to make that larger. And I'm just eyeballing it at this point. Now with it there, I would come in here and I would say, well, let me see here. I could select all items and I could come to my align icons because they are available and I could center, center. Well, that C is, even though that is centered, it doesn't look good. So we're going to, sometimes something is mathematically correct, but visually it's off. And why? is do you see that this sticks out farther than our oval? So with this sticking out and we measure down from it, when it centers, it's just taking into account the overall size of that border that I'm centering it in. It's not taking into account that this loop sticks out farther. So by that, I know I've got it centered up and down pretty good. So now I'm going to come in and all we care about is that it is visually pleasing. So I look at that and I say, hey, that looks pretty good. So now with this, I have created a beautiful little quilt label to go on the back of a quilt that I've made for my new granddaughter. So you can see how simple making a label is. So let's go ahead and let's just do one more goodie here. Let's get to a new design screen. And I just want to point out something else. So let's take um, another border. Let's just take a cool border here. Okay, now let's say I was going to put several lines of text in here. So now I would come and again I would go to text. You've got so many cute things in here. And I'm in borders and I'm going to left mouse click on screen. Well, of course what I picked last was there. But now I've got a little bit more that I want in here. So I can either go with line script, I could go with Linda, I've got several little small ones in here, but let's go ahead and go with the small. And this is just a line small or line script. Let's go with line small. 
Now I could come in here with this and I could type in, um, let's see, made for Noah. Well, it's a little girl one. Made for Maddie. Um, on seven, I can even put July 7th, 2017. Um, happy birthday, Grandma Kathy. Or Kathy Quinn, or happy graduation, whatever you want to put. But if you have lots of lines of text, sometimes you're putting in um, a lot more detail into your labels. I'm going to apply this to my text. So it's going to come up. So now that I've got this, I'm going to fit it in here. And I could actually make this just a little larger. Whoops, not that corner. I want to get the little black square. Well, I'm still getting it. Whoops, no, I know what I'm doing wrong. Let me tell you what I'm doing wrong. And do's your friend. Okay, now that I have it all selected like this and I have all the control points, if I get anything on any of the corners, that is going to stretch the text. Watch what I'm talking about. This will stretch. Any of these corners will stretch. If I wanted to do pin it type, you get the idea here. Now, the bottom right hand arrow is if I needed to make it longer to fill the space, but not change the height. Okay, so you get that. Now, I'm going to grab this again and undo as my friend. I don't need it longer. I don't need it to be pennant, and I didn't need that little round part. Now we're back to where we started. If I use the upper left hand arrow, that is going to size it proportionately for me. So I'm going to make it just a little larger. Now again, I am going to select everything here, all items, and on this one, I'm going to go ahead and center, center. Now that is a perfect center because, of course, this is square. Now I could grab the lettering. I could change the color of the letters. I mean, you know how to do all that. But here we go. Here is another cute little quilt label. And I might even come in here and put a little more space in between these lines. And do as my friend, as I grab that by accident. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to put maybe 50% line spacing because I want to be able to have it, since the text is small, I want a little clarity between the lines. There we go. So I put a little bit more space in between the lines and I could even add more if I wanted to. But you see what a cute idea this is for a nice little label. So fun labels, all kinds of borders and embellishments in this border frame to come in here and play some play fun with labels or putting a monogram on your quilt with a nice decor under it. So look through these and play with them and think about having some really cute embroidered labels. Whether you are a traditional quilter and just creating labels for the back of your quilt or you're like me, you like everything done in the hoop, here's a beautiful way to get nice labels. So I look forward to seeing you again next week. I hope you enjoyed the project of the week.